this is the um, beat up table I found at the thrift store. Uh, it was listed at $4.99, $4.99, and I had a 20% coupon, so it was pretty much like $3.99-ish. So um, yes, it's beat up. The first thing um, we're gonna do, and the first thing I did when I was at the thrift store is to check and make sure that this piece can come off. Cause this looks like, I mean, I don't even know what happened here, but um, so when I was there, I unscrewed these and these turned. So I'm gonna take those off, take this out and put this back on cause I don't need this bottom shelf. And I'm just gonna be using this as a plant stand. So I don't need that extra support down there anyway. I'm sure this gives some more sturdiness to the, to the little table, but don't need it. Um, so before we start chalk painting this, we're gonna you know, get this drawer out, take off this knob, and we're going to clean it with soap and water. And if there's any mold or mildew on your piece, um, use a wood cleaner to get it out. Usually when there's water damage, sometimes you'll get some mold and mildew action too. This is just bubbling from water. So I don't see any mold or mildew, but we'll take care of this and we'll smooth it out and I'll show you how. So easy. See these just screwed. You know, I checked this, like I said, in the store. So keep them roughly where they belong so you don't mess them up and uh, put them back in. There we go. I don't have to worry about this beat up, water damaged shelf. In the garbage it goes. So first step, if you have any damage, like we're talking about, you wanna sand it down. And you could use kind of a rotary sander or a belt sander, but we're gonna do this by hand because they're, they're little areas. And we're gonna start with a tough, rough grit. <clears throat> this is P100, it's actually medium. But just kind of go in. And you're gonna even out these bumps. So go over it with your finger. And some of these still have a little bit to it, but we're gonna go over with the fine grit now and really smooth things out. You're basically like smoothing out the texture because you don't want a lot of this to come up when you're chalk painting. Okay, so now we're gonna take a, a damp um, paper towel or a washcloth, we're gonna wipe all this down, and then we're gonna get to painting. So chalk painting is super easy. Um, I use um, a home decor brand, and chalk paint basically has plaster and paint mixed together and it is self-leveling so you don't have to prep you don't have to prime um, it does take a couple coats and we'll see on the top where we did a lot of our sanding if we're going to need i think we're going to definitely need three coats up there but that's what makes it super super easy so what i like to do and I, you know you can check out my other projects on my other playlists for crafting i've um I've chalk painted a mirror, I've chalk painted a, like a $9 nightstand, lots and lots of things. So I just have a little cup and in it I've got chalk paint with just a little bit of water just to loosen it up and I have just a $2 chip brush. Any kind of cheapy chip brush will do. Um, I invest in the wax brush and we'll get to that step. So a little goes a long way. What you do is you go against the grain And then long strokes with. That's it. So we're going to cover this whole thing on a first coat. First coat not going to look good. The second coat and even the third coat will look a lot better. Now I'm going to do a different color up top. I'm going to do a chocolate brown. So I'm going to do this bottom part first and then I'll probably tape it off to do the brown.
but we'll get there. I'll show you what to do. So I've painted the legs and this main part of the table, and you can see it's pretty streaky, like I said it was going to be. It's okay because the second coat is going to self-level over it and fill in the grooves and start smoothing out. And at that point, you kind of see if you want to do a second coat or not. Sometimes I go for a third. Um, I carefully painted the legs. You could do this um, by setting the table down. If it's too weird to have it sitting up, you could lay it down on the ground and, and paint your legs. You could also unscrew the legs and, you know, paint them. And then once they're done, you kind of reassemble the table. You could do it that way too. To that end, I've taken the drawer out because it's a lot easier to paint with it out. I'm probably not going to paint the sides because I don't want it to stick, um, but I am going to paint the front. Okay, so now that we're done and I've got my drawer down there, There's my little drawer. Okay, I've wrapped my brush, because in between coats, you don't want to keep, you know, washing and drying your brush. You can just wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the, in the fridge and it keeps it nice and soft and keeps the paint actually malleable. So this is a trick I do in between coats and you want to wait two hours before your second coat. So let's put the timer on and we'll check back. Okay, so this has been a little over two hours and you can see it's streaky. So we're gonna do our second coat. Same as before, we're gonna go against and then long strokes with. So I just wanna show you the difference in how smooth this is now compared to how streaky it was with our first coat. So it's definitely a much better look if you can at least get that second coat in. Here we are, looking much better. So you don't see the streaks, it's all kind of settling in, leveling off. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more coat, so I'm gonna give this two hours and then we'll go one more time. So again, I'm wrapping my brush. I'm also saran wrapping my paint and putting it in the fridge so that it stays fresh too. So we're ready for the top. And it's the same technique, um, so kind of against the grain and then with. And you're gonna notice some funky stuff going on here. One of the things I did was I put a very thin layer of chalk paint on our areas that we sanded. Um, I wouldn't do this with wood, but this has got, it's, it's, this top has press board, so it, felt a little funky to me, so I wanted to get some chalk paint in there for the kind of that cardboard press board to kind of absorb so that when we put our layer down, it'll go smoother. I didn't want those areas to soak in on that first layer. So, and I've had this sitting for a few hours so that it could cure up. So I've cleaned my chip brush and towel dried it. And I've got brown this time. And if you want to add a little water to kind of thin this out, you can. So against the grain. Of course, there's not much grain to this because it's press board, but if this was wood grain, go against the grain and then go with. And the reason why you do that is because you really wanna get the paint into the grooves of the grain. And then going with the grain gives it a nice smooth finish. Like so. So continue. We're gonna let this sit for a couple hours and then do our second coat. Okay, so that's our first coat. Doesn't look great. Don't sweat it. We'll put another coat on and see what we got. All right, let's see if one more coat will smooth some, some of this out. Not bad. So that's with two coats. 
looking pretty good. Okay, so before I do the wax, I like to wait and let it sit overnight just to cure up. And then, if you want to have some distressed effects, you can go in with a light, um, some light sandpaper and sand away um, edges or places where it would naturally be worn. If you want to see some techniques around that, you can uh, look at my craft playlist. There's um, a rocking chair I've done and a small telephone table. <clears throat> so I'm, I decided I'm not going to distress this. This piece was so distressed when I got it. Um, just going to keep it nice and simple. So waxing is super easy, and this is where I invested in a really good wax brush. And I got this on Amazon, and what you're looking for is nice bristles with a flat top. And I have a plastic plate that I use a lot for waxing. Any kind of plate will do, even just a paper plate that you can throw away. And you need wax, furniture wax. And this comes in a lot of different colors. You can get a lot of different effects with wax as well. Um, you can look at my mirror video if you wanna see how to use brown wax to go in and accent different details on a piece and make it look aged that way. Um, you can use white wax to do the same. This is clear and wax is really the way old furniture makers used to seal up their furniture. And it also is nice with chalk paint because it gives it a nice soft finish and it, it enhances the the soft kind of chalky effect of the chalk paint. And a little goes a long way. So you just put a little bit on. Take your brush with the flat end, get it covered. And then it's kind of the same, a little bit of the same technique, at least in theory. You wanna take the brush and use circular motions to kind of get into the, the grooves and the surface of the piece. And then long strokes to go with the grain. And don't be scared, this is gonna dry clear. Okay, so mission accomplished. This piece is waxed and you can see there's a, a sheen to it. It's going to um, soften to this like kind of matte gloss. So you're not gonna see a lot of these streaks at all. So don't worry about that. Um, so at this point, you kind of want to set it in a corner and let it sit, um, preferably overnight. But if you're in a rush and I kind of wanted to get this done before my husband got home as a surprise, look what I did. Um, I might just wait, I don't know, three to five hours, and then you want to take an old, um, like old rag or a, t a terry cloth towel like this and kind of buff it out. And so I'll, I'll show you that part of it. And then that's it. Um, try not to do anything too crazy with it for seven days. The wax needs to cure for about seven days. So you can set things on it, but you know, don't put heavy things, don't scratch it up, don't beat it up. It's not really protected until about a week, you know? So, um, so I'm gonna set it in a corner and um, I'm super excited. Look at how much it, I mean, it just looks so much better than it did. It's so cool, $3.99. I have a little plant table. We finished the table and we're at the hardware stage, which usually is the fun part, right? It's kind of like the icing on the cake and there's so many fun fixtures and really creative knobs out there and um home depot used to carry a bunch of them seems like they've gotten really pedestrian right now um went to joanne fabrics they had some cute things but they're just not the right size and that is the issue unless you want to start drilling holes um getting your husband involved um try and find the right size so that it's just an easy switch out and unfortunately for this table if you can see this is super super tiny okay so what are you gonna do 
paint it. So we're going to chalk paint this and make it cute. And it could be as simple or as ornate as your skills and confidence allow. So um, I'm gonna try to put like some delicate flowers on this because it's really at the end of the day a plant table. So I wanna kinda honor some plants. I also wanted it to be um, a focal point of the table because it's so simple. So I think I'm going to use an off-white and then paint the little flowers and leaves on this. So it's really the same method with the chalk paint as a base. Then I'm gonna use that same red for the flowers and then I'm gonna find some acrylic green up in my craft room in the attic um, to see if we can do this. So let's jump in and dress up an old knob. So I'm using some toothpicks to hold this. You, depending on the size of your hole, you can use bamboo sticks, but this makes um, painting this a lot easier. And as usual for chalk paint, that first coat is gonna be pretty yucky. There's no right way to do this. Just kind of try to follow something with long strokes. <laughs> okay, so this had three coats on it and I've got um, some simple acrylic colors. I've gotten like a, a sage green. I'm gonna use the same red from the um, the table so it kind of matches but I'm going to accent it possibly possibly with a brighter red these are just uh, furniture acrylic paints I get at the craft store um, Joanne crafts and this one's kind of an kind of like a light brown tan which I thought maybe might be a nice stem and what I'm going to attempt to do is create a little rosette at the center and then a wreath maybe around and then I possibly may um, take some sandpaper and distress the edges just a little bit to give it an aged look, something rustic. I'm not sure yet. So, um, and I've got really thin brushes to do this with. So let's see. And I think I'm going to, rather than use my wax platter, I'm gonna get a paper plate where I can put some of the paint on. protection. But how about that? Can't get that at Home Depot, can ya? So I think in the end, even though I like wasted a week searching for my perfect new piece of hardware for this thing, sometimes just using what's there is better. Okay, so our, our knob is ready for a little wax, which will seal it and protect it. So same scenario that we did on the table. Get a little wax on there. Okay, I'm gonna let it sit and dry for a couple hours and then possibly put another coat on. Well, there she is with the plant on top, all set for fall, back inside. Well, 
that's it. How easy is that, right? Get a cheap table at a thrift store, clean it up, fix it up, chalk paint, boom. You got something really cool and inexpensive and special. So <clears throat> don't be afraid of chalk paint. You can get it at craft stores and also uh, some of the like Home Depots and Lowe's also carry some too. And uh, stay tuned for more fun on the channel. We're gonna be winding down our garden stuff. We're gonna be picking up a lot more crafting, a lot more indoor stuff, also preserving our garden harvest. Um, a lot more preserves coming up and canning. So stay tuned. If you don't wanna miss out, please subscribe below on that fun little button. Subscribe, it really helps us out. And uh, thanks for your support. Stay safe, stay well, be creative, make your world beautiful one pixel at a time. <laughs>